the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen. Come. Christos Anesti. Christos Anviat. Christos Vos Grese. Christ is risen. Joy again to always uh, be able to declare those words, and we'll say them over and over and over again as much as we can. But today in the Orthodox Church on May the 15th, we celebrate the feast of our righteous father, Pacomius the Great. Now, even though he has that name, the Great, next to him, it's a good chance that many of you, maybe all of you, have never heard of St. Pacomius the Great. But he was one who was a contemporary of uh, St. Anthony the Great, whose icon is over there. St. Macarius the Great, whose icon is up on the balcony. Uh, and so he was one of those great desert fathers who lived in the Egyptian desert in the 4th century. Now St. Pacomius was not born into a Christian family. In fact, he was born into a pagan family. And he became a soldier, and he was a soldier in the Roman Empire. And it was there as a soldier in the Roman Empire that he saw firsthand the work that Christians were doing. They were helping people. And that struck St. Pacomius to his very core. He was assigned as a soldier to actually be, uh, his battalion was in charge of a prison. And he saw how well the Christians took care of the prisoners and how Christians took care of the soldiers who were taking care of the prison, regardless of whether or not they were Christians. Of course, in the uh, beginning of the 4th century, not as many of them were likely to be Christian at that time. And he determined in himself that after he left the military that he would become a Christian, and he did. And he devoted himself to Christ so much that he became one of these great desert fathers and by going out there into the desert and becoming one of those fathers, you think about uh, the, that they went out there by themselves. Well, most of the time they did. But St. Pacomius is actually most known for his rule of life. So his goal, his hope was to be able to teach other people about how to be a monastic about how to live out there in the wilderness. And really, his ultimate goal was so that uh, the monks and everyone, because that's Christ's goal, of course, is everyone's salvation, that they might know how their souls might be healed so that they could have eternal life. And that's, of course, the entire mission and message of Christ our God. And we see it in the gospel this morning. Because while we have a beautiful, wonderful a uh, story of a profound healing, a man who was paralyzed for 38 years, laying by a pool. It was about so much more than just the physical healing that our Lord was able to bring about there at that day. Because it was about his soul, the healing of his soul. Because after he heals the man of his physical paralysis, he tells him, go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you, worse than laying paralyzed for 38 years. Go and sin no more. It's about the healing of his soul. But the rule of St. Pacomius and the way that our Lord interacts with this paralyzed man give us a very good example and an understanding of what we are to do, those of us who are not monastics, how we are to live our life, how we are to focus our attention so that our souls can be healed. The first thing is that first question that our Lord asks of the paralyzed man. He says, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? And so the first thing that we have to do in living our lives according to the gospel and living our lives united to Christ is coming to the determination that we desire Christ, that we desire to be united to Christ, that we desire to walk into the heavenly kingdom, that we desire communion and that intimate union with our Lord uh, that is the whole goal of all of our life. And St. Pacomia says the same thing on your bulletin on the very back. The first couple of uh, quotes are all from uh, St. Pacomius, but he asked one of those uh, of his fellow monks, he says, do you wish to see God in this age or the age to come? 
testing his desire. Abba Theodore responded, I wish to see him for the age that lasts eternity. What a great answer. So Abba Pacomius answered, Make haste to bring forth the fruit the gospel speaks of. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And if an impure thought enters your mind, be it hatred or wickedness, jealousy, envy, contempt for your brother or human vainglory, remember at once and say, if I consent to any one of those things, I shall not see the Lord. If we have clearly, if we have firmly the intention and the desire to see God, they can help us to then check our behavior. To be able to check not only our behavior, but according to Abba Pacomius, even the thoughts that enter into our brains. Because if something that is outside of the gospel enters into our, our thoughts, then we can say, nope, I'm not going to engage in that because I desire above all else to see God. And so the first step is all about that desire. Do you want to be made well? The second thing that we can uh, speak about after our desire is setting up our expectations. It is patience that reveals every grace to you. And it is through patience that the saints received all that was promised to them. That P word. Not a four-letter word, but we might think of it as one because we don't want to necessarily have patience and the patience that is required to really be able to be in communion with God. The paralyzed man laid there, whether at the, uh, the pool for 38 years, he was at least ill for 38 years and paralyzed. That took a lot of patience for him to be able to still have faith, still have hope, and still have trust that God would, in fact, heal him. It takes a lot of patience for us. A lot of times in the spiritual life or with almost anything in our life, we, life, we want immediate results. We've been conditioned to that in our culture. Back when the internet was dial-up, it didn't come quite as quickly, but now we know we want it right away, all of the things. But in the spiritual life, and really in anything that truly matters, that sort of thing is, is not how it works. Our spiritual life, our growth in Christ is something that takes patience because it takes a lot of time. It takes a lifetime. Those desert fathers remind us that expect temptation to your last breath. It takes a lifetime of patience with that fervent desire for Christ before we are able to see the end result of that, which is, of course, healing of our souls and entrance into the kingdom of God. So with that patient desire, we then follow the commandments of Christ. St. Pacomius says, be ever more obedient to God and he will save you. Be obedient to God. Follow the commandments of Christ. The paralyzed man, when Christ came to him and said, rise, take up your pallet and walk, he didn't laugh and say, what are you talking about? That is crazy. He trusted the words of the man that was standing there in front of him. He knew that there was something special about this person, Christ, because of his faith, because of his trust in God. And he was able to immediately, and the gospel says that, he was able to immediately be healed from that very moment. And so we are to be obedient to the commandments of Christ and to humbly be obedient to the commands of Christ because Pacomia says, Humility is least among men, but precious and glorious before God. If we acquire it, we shall trample the whole force of the enemy underfoot. We patiently are obedient and humbly follow the commandments of Christ, and that is where the healing of our souls will come in. Because that is where we are showing that we are uniting ourselves to Christ, as opposed to uniting ourselves to something else. We humbly follow the commandments of Christ, and we obey Him over and above what we think might be the right thing, because sometimes we think we know better. But I promise, brothers and sisters, we do not. It is vitally important for us to be obedient to God, to be obedient to Christ, and to follow those commandments. And so if we truly desire the healing of our souls, which is the goal of everything that Christ ever did, the work of God from the very beginning to the very end is about the healing of our souls, to end 
for us to be able to enter into communion with him into the kingdom of heaven. And people like St. Pacomius who have laid down the life uh, before us to say, this is exactly how we are to do this. So let's follow their example, especially as we are here in this time proclaiming the resurrection of Christ and make sure that we are firming up our real and true desire, our desire to know God above everything else. And when we have that as our firm desire, we can be patient and we can go through this life with the humble obedience to the commandments of Christ so that our souls can be healed so that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven in communion with our Lord and with all of the saints. And so on this feast day of St. Pacomius, may he pray for us and may we follow his example and his rule as we look ahead with patient, humble obedience to the desire of our hearts being fulfilled and our souls being healed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed.